In today's podcast, we will be discussing our Social Media 2 unit. Participating today will be Miranda and myself, Julia. We are going to discuss some of the issues surrounding social media, particularly in the education system. Some questions we will discuss include, should we use social media in the classroom? And if so, how can we use it effectively? What are the benefits and the shortcomings of encouraging our students to use social media as an educational tool? So the articles from this week provide both negative and positive ways social media can be used in the classroom. Right now, I'm going to focus on the article, Social Media in Education. It starts off by saying that it is proven that the use of Facebook can lead to the decrease of grades. But then the article goes on to discuss two case studies where it was proven social media can be a positive supplement to learning. One study was done in the United Kingdom and the other was done in the United States, showing how social media is positive for both formal and informal learning. Many people define formal learning as learning in the classroom with the teacher, whereas informal learning would be outside the classroom or self-directed. Both are very loose definitions and many people feel as though informal and formal learning can be defined differently. But for the purposes of this podcast, we will leave it at that. The study done in the United Kingdom shows an example of how social media can be beneficial to formal learning inside the classroom. Teachers use different platforms to manage group work, share information, resources, and links, and to communicate and share project outcomes. This case supported social media as it helped with collaboration, creativity, and communication in the classroom. The study in the United States justified more informal learning as it discussed a private group called Hot Dish through Facebook. This group was for climate change activists and was a place to access articles for climate change and then discuss, share, like, and comment on them. The people involved reported that they were more likely to comment on this page because they knew it was a safe space for people concerned with climate change, just like them. It was proven that this is an effective space for informal learning as the students involved read 89% of the available articles. Students reported that they would check it almost every time they checked Facebook, which was often. So this is another way that social media has a positive impact on informal learning. That's a great example. I was really interested to learn about the success of that hot dish example. When students are truly interested in a topic and it is presented in an informal learning format, like the example you cited, the potential for learning can really increase. That same reading also talked about the disruption of boundaries between sites where learning takes place. And it goes on to show us examples in Europe where teachers were encouraged to, quote, adopt social learning approaches supported by a range of social media tools. The teachers were not given exact lesson plans or scripts, but were just provided with ideas for inspiration. And the result was a successful one where teachers and students used a wide range of digital tools, including social networking sites. I like how you mentioned that the teachers were not given an exact lesson plan to incorporate social media into their classroom. Um, This is good because it left it open for teachers to use social media as they please and however they think that it can most effectively supplement their teaching. Um, This shows different ways social media can be a positive aspect instead of just giving every teacher the same lesson to follow. Some examples of how teachers use it were to make post and watch videos, to use and make games, to use 3D printing and design, and also to share things using different social networking designs or sites like you previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes, the the findings in our reading this week um, also reported that the majority of students had positive learning experiences when the platform Twitter was used in the classroom. One common way it was used was that teachers would leverage the character limit from Twitter and have students paraphrase key points from their learning that week. Other ways teachers used it was by sending students relevant course information and maybe less commonly as a platform for Q&A or collaboration. 
example that I was inspired by in the Twitter reading was with a history class in London. Students were asked to visit galleries of modern London following a predefined art trail. They took photos with their mobile device and uploaded them to Twitter. They answered related, related inquiries and then created a presentation. Other similar examples to this included students being required to use a hashtag with a course related keyword so their classmates could find and then comment on their tweets. I thought this was a really fun way to use social media as an educational tool and get students sharing what they were seeing and learning in real time. It also seamlessly bridged the gap between the classroom and the real world using devices and platforms that most students are already familiar with. Twitter definitely can be a positive class or platform for classrooms because it is an easy space to see your classmates comments and share articles. As mentioned in the article using Twitter for education on page 111, they discussed whether you should make Twitter mandatory or not. I once used Twitter in a design class where my teacher made it mandatory. It was not mandatory to tweet, but it was mandatory to have an account and to check it daily. My teacher would tweet articles that were relevant to our projects as well as quick tips that might be useful for the application we were using at the time. If you did not have a Twitter, then you would not have access to these additional articles and the teacher would send necessary notifications that you would not receive. Julia mentions the character limit and how it is beneficial in the fact that students can pick out key facts from what they are learning and post about them. But I feel like it's also beneficial so that teachers can send quick notifications to the class that they must see. Um, oftentimes, if a teacher has something to share with an entire class, they'll send an email and there's a pretty good possibility that some people might oversee it. Twitter gives you the option to set notifications to certain people. So I feel as though this is something that can be really helpful for students. They can set it so that their teacher um, tweets get notifications on their phone to make sure that they're not missing anything or overlooking important information in an email. Yeah, I really appreciate that positive example you shared, Miranda. Um, and most of the feedback from these studies was positive but there was some negative feedback as well. On page 106 of the Twitter reading, it listed four main drawbacks, and they were increased workload, privacy, message length limitation, and possible distraction. The increased workload seemed to be primarily a negative for the teacher who may have to then read through and process many, many tweets depending on class size. And the message length limitation, while that could be a positive, in this case they were referring to it as a negative because it could restrict the in-depth thinking um, of a class discussion or it could lead to misunderstanding. For myself, the biggest reasons would be lack of privacy and possible distraction. I would be one of those students who would uh, probably create a completely separate account for my school Twitter than from my personal Twitter. Occasionally for my current job, I'm required to hop on Facebook to look up certain events or other information. And I do just use my personal Facebook. And when I do, I try to do this, my work-related Facebook activities as quickly as possible with proverbial blinders on. Because frankly, I don't want to be inundated with information about my friends and family while at work. It's extremely distracting for me to see my personal news feed while at work. And so I can only imagine what that's like in the classroom. Do you see any other negatives, Miranda? Well, you raise a really good point in that Facebook is distracting. And I feel as though this is what the article Social Media and Education was referring to when they say that Facebook is a distraction. They weren't necessarily discussing it in terms of Facebook for education, but I feel as though they are referring to it when people are using Facebook for personal reasons. Like if they're doing schoolwork in one tab and have Facebook open in another tab, um, I can absolutely see how this would be a distraction and and therefore lead to lower grades. Um, you raise a really good point in saying that a negative aspect of social media would be the lack of privacy. I definitely agree with you in that I would make a separate account for my school profile um, and then one for my personal profile. 
I do not want my personal life and posts to be shared with my entire class and professors. And in addition to that, I don't necessarily want my views and opinions to be shared um, with my entire social media platform when discussing things in class. I feel as though this topic is relevant to the discussion from last week on the article, Why Do Teams Stream Strange Online? They discuss future jobs being able to see your profile. I feel as though having a separate account for school can be beneficial to share with jobs or higher education so that they can see your involvement in a positive way or an educational way through certain discussions or topics. Um, Another solution to this problem is to use platforms that are only used for education. For example, in the article Social Media and Education, they mention the application Edmodo on page 16. This is used purely for education purposes. Another application I know of is called Class Dojo. It is like Facebook, but is for teachers, students, and parents to keep communication. I think using private ed education platforms um, is a way to include social media in the classroom because it's not mixing personal life with education. And as mentioned in the article, some schools have specific platforms like Facebook and Twitter blocked. So this is a great solution to that problem. Um, these education only platforms are things that will be available in all settings and in the classrooms so that teachers do not need to worry about what they're using being blocked on the school computers. I completely agree with you, Miranda. Um, using private education only platforms is a great way to leverage the benefits of social media without the potential for social distraction or privacy invasion. And you brought up another great reason to keep it separate. Um, it allows students to comment and think freely without worrying about public judgment. The classroom should be a safe space for students to ask questions and think about different topics without worrying about um, you know, getting likes or, or someone from a different, um, from someone from the public arena commenting on what they're saying. If public social media platforms are to be used, as one of the teachers in the social media and education article concluded, it could work, but only with clear tasks and clear deadlines. But I think we all know that's much easier said than done. So overall, based on the information provided from the articles we read this week, social media can definitely have some positive benefits on both formal and informal learning. Social media can supplement learning to share information and articles, as well as create focus groups and keep communication between teachers and classmates. Social media can be integrated into the classroom using platforms that are already well known and used, like Twitter and Facebook, and it can also be used using platforms that were made only for education, like Edmodo and Class Dojo. Um, I think that we have been going back and forth in this class a lot as to whether social media is a positive or a negative um, thing when it comes to education and students. And I really appreciate these two articles um, showing how common platforms can be a positive um, aspect in the classrooms. And I think one of the biggest takeaways is that even Facebook, which is a well-known, um, commonly used platform, it can be used, um, semi-privately for specific focus groups, like they mentioned, um, with the climate change group. So even if something, um, could have negative aspects, you can find a way to make it positive by making a specific focus group just just for your class. Um, Julia, do you have any closing comments? Uh, yeah, I completely agree that these platforms have a lot of potential for good in the, in the classroom, but like you mentioned, they just need to be managed and, and leveraged in a way so that we can get all of those, those great benefits for our students. So whether that's putting parameters around the public platforms or, or creating our own education-only platform, there, there is a way to strike a balance and, and make education um, a little more palatable, perhaps for a lot of our younger students and, and effective. So I think we just wanna say thank you for listening and to tune in next time. Yes, that sounds good. Bye. Bye.